Delicious. Hi, I'm Tom Spellman with Dave Wilson Nursery. It's a beautiful day here in the San Joaquin Valley. It's mid-April, just after tax day. It's a nice, sunny, clear day, and we're going to take a look at our backyard-style orchard today. This has been in the ground now for just over 13, 13 and a half months. We have a nice uh, flush of growth on everything. We had beautiful bloom this spring. So we're going to check on a couple of things today. We're going to look for varieties that have a heavy fruit set. We're going to do a little thinning. We're also going to look and see if we have any disease or insect issues that we'll need to deal with. So come on, let's take a walk through the orchard. This is our four-in-one combination. It's peaches, uh, nectarine, and nectar plum. And a couple of these varieties, uh, this one, Tropic Snow in particular, is a real early season peach. So if we don't get in and do some thinning now, we're never going to have an opportunity to gain fruit size. I want my fruit to be spaced at about 8 to 12 inches apart on this tree. So this Tropic Snow peach has way too much fruit on it, and you can see this branch, about an 18, 20 inch piece of branch has a dozen or more fruit. So I'm always going to come out to the end of the branch and start here. I want to make sure that I'm, I'm taking the weight off where it's going to make the most difference. So I can leave a little more fruit down on the, on the side where the branch has more supporting ability, but I want to take off just about everything out here. Take off all those doubles. You don't want any doubles. They're, they're too hard to to harvest anyway and you're always going to have split fruit problems. So I'll leave one, two, three fruit on that. Always look for that smaller fruit, that damaged fruit. Take those off first. Look for your doubles, your triples. Anywhere there's a problem, make sure you've got them thinned out as much as you possibly can. Especially on a young tree like this that ripens up early in the season. If there's too much fruit on it, you have the opportunity for the tree to get build up too much weight and then just break branches and self-destruct. You want to make sure you thin heavy and thin early. Here's our two-in-one uh, showy flowers peach. This happens to be mid-pride and the old original Saturn, which is a, a both double pink flowering varieties. Uh, Saturn ripens up in August, mid-pride ripens up in July. I don't really want to do a whole lot of pruning this early in the season, but I can see right here that this one big branch on the mid-pride is really kind of interrupting with the Saturn. So I'm going to make one cut today. I'm just going to come down and take out that one branch. And just by doing that, I probably thin 30, 35, 40 fruit off the tree. So we'll get that out of the way. That gives us a little more open space. Here's another example of just, there's 25 fruit on this little branch here and it's kind of interrupting in the center. So I'm gonna take most of that branch out. So then I'll just thin this cluster back, get the small fruit off, open it up a little bit, now it has more ability to hold and ripen up that fruit. Here's our Espelliard Burgundy Plum on a post and wire system. It's got a three wire trellis and the plant's starting to fill out real nice. And Burgundy Plum, real reliable producer. Again, this young tree produced way too much fruit this year. So we're gonna thin this back considerably also. We're probably gonna take back 80% uh, of the plums that are on this tree at this time. Just leave a little bit of fruit on here. Always look for the smaller ones. Always look for the ones that are more clustered together. Thin out your clusters real heavy. Go to nice single spaced fruit, nice large sized fruit. The larger the better at this point. You really only want to have maybe one fruit about every four to six inches apart at this time. Here's our little multi-bud apple. It's a four in one. It has Anna, Dorset Golden, Fuji, and Gordon. They're all low chill varieties, but typically Anna and Dorset Golden always bloom earlier and they always set the heavier crop. So this is just a little small tree. It's only three and a half feet tall right now. We really don't want any fruit on this at all, but for the video, I'll be kind. I'll thin it down by about 50%. So we'll just take some of the major fruit clusters off. Here's one big cluster right here. This should really be thinned down to just one single fruit. Here's our three-in-one pear combination. Three different European pears planted at three feet apart in a little triangle. Uh, each tree has a little set of fruit this year, but Harold Delight here seemed to put on a pretty heavy set, almost every flower set of fruit. So we're going to thin all of these clusters back to one single piece of fruit. I'm going to use my clippers for this instead of just pruning them off by, by hand because I want to make sure I get a nice clean cut and I don't want to pull anything way down, back down into the stem. Again, always look for the largest, more established piece of fruit. If anything looks deformed or anything's in, in clusters, those are the ones you want to remove. 
leave one nice large piece for each bloom cluster and you'll have a nice reasonable size nice set of fruit good quality fruit as it matures on the tree here's a couple of new additions to our collection here this is mini royal cherry and royal lee cherry two great low chill cherries adaptable to all kinds of conditions where you could never grow cherries before these are budded on our, our new root z dwarfing rootstock this was tested as 3CR178 and uh, released by Zagers a few years ago. It's probably the most reliable dwarfing cherry rootstock on the market today. It holds back trees by 50% or even more, and, and very, very few cherry rootstocks are even going to come close to that. I'm standing here in our hard prune section of the orchard where we're going to keep all these trees in this row back down to less than five feet tall. Here's cotton candy aprium. This was a little small calipered liner when we put it in the ground and it's really done well. And we did leave a fair amount of fruit on this because everybody just loves cotton candy here and we're not going to pass up an opportunity to get some good fresh fruit. Here's our Santa Rosa. This is going to be real dramatic and real small. We're always going to keep this one tiny and short. It's got a few nice fruits set on it already and it's looking good for the season. And here's our new addition to the hard prune row. This is Flavor Finale Pluot. This is the, the late Pluot in our series, and we want to make sure that we have this one included in the collection. This is the one that after everything else is gone, no more Flavor Kings, no more Flavor Grenades, Flavor Finale comes on and they're delicious right into October. Here's our little hard prune double delight nectarine. This was just beautiful when it bloomed with those big bright pink double flowers. Has a nice light fruit set on it, probably dozen or 15 pieces of fruit. I don't even think I'll thin it. But this is another one that we're going to keep pruned down and real manageable. Probably never let this tree get any bigger than five feet and just keep a nice little lollipop sized globe on it and enjoy the beautiful spring flowers and the wonderful, wonderful mid-season nectarines. You know, we haven't done much pruning today, but uh, one thing I think I'd like to tip a little bit is this Espelliard Flavor Delight Aprium. It's starting to grow out 12, 16, 18 inches on some of these leads and I want to just give this a little bit of check so that we have nice... Uh, light exposure and, and air movement so that this fruit will ripen up properly. So I'm just going to go back in and nip these tips back a little bit. Not everything, just, just a few of them, just to give it a little bit of balance. We'll definitely come back and do a little bit more work on this when we do our first summer pruning. I'm looking for disease issues today and I, and I did a little survey on all of our peach and nectarine trees today and I, I'm finding almost no peach leaf curl, only a couple of leaves in all the trees in the block. This has been one of those years when it's um, drier than average and peach leaf curl is not present in the amounts that it normally is in a wet year. If you do have an issue with peach leaf curl or any other disease or problem that you can't properly identify, make sure and take a clean sample, a clean fresh sample, put it in a Ziploc baggie, seal it up, take it down to your local retail nursery, and then make a diagnosis for you, tell you exactly what it is, and give you the right product to apply for it. In my survey of trees today, I did find one insect problem. And uh, this is something that happens almost every spring with plums. Some varieties more susceptible than others. Sometimes it really doesn't make any difference what the variety is. But this is damage from young spring aphids. And they uh, get right inside the leaf as it's curling out and they do some damage. They, they, they chew on the leaf and the leaf curls up and it gives them an area where they can actually reproduce inside these curls where the leaf's twisted up. So this is something that you want to correct right away. People oftentimes will mistake this for peach leaf curl, but plums aren't susceptible to peach leaf curl. So if you, if you unfold these little crinkled up leaves, you'll find that there's little aphids colonies right down inside that are laying eggs and reproducing, and they're only going to get worse if you don't do something about them right away. Well, I'm real happy this spring with the amount of progress that we've made on this uh, orchard in such a short period of time. Just one full season in the ground and the trees look great. The calipers expanded out dramatically. We've got everything nice and balanced and, and open center pruned where it's growing out properly. We've got splash pluots, we've got burgundy plums, we've got dapple dandies, we've got peaches and nectarines and nectoplums and apriums and all kinds of fruit set. In fact, the fruit set has far exceeded anything that I expected after just one season in the ground. So we'll do a little bit more aggressive thinning today. And uh, we'll, I'm already starting to looking at some of the summer pruning that I know I want to do. 
So the next video, the next one that we do will be some early summer pruning and we'll make sure that we get everything brought back down to a reasonable size where we're going to keep it. Look at this tree. This is one of my favorites in the whole collection. This is Spice Z Nectar Plum, a great Zager interspecific between plum and nectarine. Beautiful bright red foliage, wonderful dark pink flowers in the spring. This nice little yearling tree has about uh, 15 or 20 nice pieces of fruit on it. I'm already looking at maybe a few cuts that I'm going to make in the early summer. Uh, make sure and stay tuned for our next video in this series, which will be early summer pruning and probably a little bit of fruit evaluation at that time too.